World of Sport, written by Andy Hamilton, starring Neil Pearson as Trevor and Paul Reynolds as Sammy. The time is eight minutes to eight. You're listening to today. Now, the world of sport has become big money, and with the money, of course, comes concerns that we are losing sight of the lofty Olympian ideal. With me to discuss this, I have the respected sports agent Trevor Heslop. Mr. Heslop, thanks for coming in, and how can you sleep at night? Sorry? It's a simple question. How can you sleep at night, given that you are part of a profession whose chicanery is dragging sport into the gutter? Well, I... I haven't I, finished yet. And whose greed corrodes and destroys everything that it comes into contact with. Well, with respect, John, I, I don't think that's totally fair. I mean, yes, as in any profession, the barrel contains a few rotten apples, but the rest of the apple barrel I is full of unrotten apples. Our, our agency, for instance, is a perfectly healthy apple that behaves in an ethical way. Do you expect us to believe that? Yes. Do you believe that? Yes. And yet, is it not the case that you have a business partner who's widely regarded as having the models of a hyena? Well, <laughs> hyena is a little harsh, John. Sammy is... We're talking uh, about Sammy Dobbs. Here. Yes. Sammy is sometimes a little unconventional, but he is an entrepreneurial businessman. Well, that's as may be, but is it not also the case that you have been kicked out by your wife? What? Yes or no, Mr. Heslop? Simple question. Th this is my private life, huh? Yeah, yes or no? Well, yes, but hmm. on a point of fact, John, she did not kick me out. It's an amicable separation. Really? Yes, there's no one else involved. And is that information from a single source? What? And if so, is that evidence admissible? Oh, wait a second, this is a dream. Well, it may be a dream to you, Mr. Heslop, but I can assure you that to the people of this country, it's all too real. No, 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 this is a dream. It is not a dream. It's, it's a dream because although your voice is still John Humphreys, you've now got the face of Jennifer Lopez. So, John Humphreys' voice was coming out of Jennifer Lopez's face. And body, yeah. And that's when you woke up? No, Barry, I woke up a little after that when John stroke Jennifer started dancing towards me. It was all turning a bit too ambiguous for comfort. Good morning to your sports stars. And you keep having this dream? Variants of it, yeah. It's always John Humphreys giving me a bad time, but what he changes into can vary, you know? Good morning. It was a hoover two nights yes. ago. I got sucked up into the bag. I'm afraid Sammy's not in yet, but I can put you through to his voicemail. The voice is supposed to be his impression of Gollum, so please do not be disconcerted. I have a recurring dream. Thanks. I'm running up this long escalator, only the escalator isn't moving. And my legs get heavier and heavier. And I look up, and the escalator's getting longer and longer. That's not a dream, that's the northern line. Trevor, your wife phoned at 9.07. She said she will call back. Thanks, Sergeant. What about you, Teresa? Do you get recurring dreams? There was one I used to get when I was younger. I'd be in this field of rippling tall golden corn and striding through the corn towards me I'd see Elvis Presley and then Elvis would reach out to me and... Let's talk about something else, shall we? Morning, wage slaves. Morning, Sally. You're late in? Yeah, I took the long way round to avoid the charity collectors. Didn't want to get involved in another slanging match. Can you pass my post, please, Barry? I'm expecting a humiliating climb down from Richard Branson over my so-called air rage. I think your dream is straightforward, Trevor. Do you? John Humphreys is you. You are asking yourself, what kind of man am I? Who compromises himself on a daily basis and is no longer wanted by the woman he loves. This dream is clearly an expression of your acute sense of personal failure. I think that's a rather literal interpretation, actually, Hydron. Dreams are more codified than that, if I remember my Freud correctly. Freud has been largely discredited. Most scientists no longer believe that sex is the driving force in human nature. No? Well, they need to get out more. Right, no letter from Branson, so it's time to play hardball. Hardball? That's going to involve being abusive to someone down a phone, isn't it? It's not abuse, Trev. It's assertiveness, which is linked to self-worth. You have to value yourself enough to give yourself permission to tell someone they're a tosser. It's psychologically healthy. It's what makes for a successful personality. Look at Gordon Ramsay. He doesn't bottle up his emotions. No, he inflicts them on everybody else. He expresses his self-worth. Ergo, he's a success. Saying ergo doesn't make things sound more convincing. You do know that, don't you? It's Latin. Yeah, it's Latin for I'm talking bollocks. Trev, Merrill's on the line for you. All right, I'll take it in my office. I just think self-worth, Trev. Got it. So, Hydran, how are you this Serrut Morgen? I'm fine. Thank you. And your partner? How's she? 
She is also fine. Oh, still away filming on location, is she? Yeah. Well, if you ever find yourself feeling a bit lonely of an evening, you can always ring me. No, it's fine. If I get that lonely, I will ring the Samaritans. <laughs> nice one. Yes. <laughs> Very droll, wasn't it, Barry? Incidentally, I think you'll find the toilets backed up and we'll need your magic touch. It's all right. I've called out the plumber. Plumber? Oh, right, of course. I forgot it's National Extravagance Week. So, you reckon my escalator dream is straightforward, Hydrant? Yep. You want me to come round tonight? Yeah, just for a chat. All right. What about? It's not stuff I want to talk about over the phone. Okay. Will Toby be there? No, he's at Mum's for a couple of days. Thank God. He's so moody. I don't say anything to him. Well, that's all the hormones kicking in, isn't it? It's a weird time for a boy, you know? Your life becomes a drama that's played out almost entirely in your trousers. It's just something he has to go through, that's all. It's just a phase. Well, it certainly generates a lot of laundry. Can you pop round about seven? Sure. What, and maybe stay for something to eat and a chat? And... Uh, no, sorry. I've got people coming. Oh, right. My poetry group. Right. That's nice. Yes, it is. You sure you don't want to give me an idea of what... No, not really. OK, fine. No problem. See you at seven. OK. What is all that about? Yep. Ted Spicer for you. Ted Spicer? OK, put him through. Ted, how are you? I am not a happy bunny, as it happens, Trev. Not a happy bunny at all. And clearly this escalator dream represents your anxiety that you will always remain the office junior and will be unable to achieve your goals. I keep having it. Well, then stop. What? Stop having the dream. It's a form of mental weakness, Barry. So you never have anxiety dreams, then? Barry, what would a man like me have anxiety dreams about? The very notion is absurd. Well, what sort of dreams do you have, then? I don't dream. Everybody dreams. Well, clearly not, because I don't. Why not? Presumably because dreams are suppressed desires and I do not suppress my desires. I action them. Only underachievers dream. Look at all those incompetent pharaohs in the Bible. Yes, but their dreams weren't psychological, were they? They were portents. You know, dreams that predicted the arrival of some dreadful pestilence or blight. Hello, Ralph. Hi, team. <laughs> I'm not interrupting, am I? No, it's fine. Good. How's things? Pretty good, yep, yep. You're very orange. Forty sun lab. I bet you have dreams about your anxieties, don't you, Ralph? Oh, gosh, yes. <laughs> What's your main fear? Main fear? Well, kidnapping, obviously. Uh, kidnapping? Um, yes. It's an ever-present threat. What, for out-of-work TV presenters? I'm still a face, ergo I am at risk. I mean, I take precautions, obviously, you know, vary my daily routine, change my route, that sort of thing. Well, it seems to be working. No one's kidnapped you so far. True. Mm. But we are not at home to Mr. Complacency, are we? Are you accusing us of unsettling one of your players? Well, it's a bit of a coincidence, isn't it, Trev? You know, young Jason, one of your clients, scores a few goals, gets himself a bit of attention, you know, profiled by Ali McCoist, interviewed by Gabby Logan, photographed snug in some bint off Hollyoaks. Next thing we know, the papers are linking it with Chelsea. They link everyone with Chelsea, from David Beckham to my nan. It's just the bog-standard column filler they use on the quiet news days when no footballers have been arrested. It's just flim-flam. Nobody believes it. Jason does. Mentally, he's all over the shop. Yesterday in training, I caught him on his mobile talking to an Aston Martin dealer. Oh, all the footballers are glued to their mobiles. Yeah, but not while they're taking a penalty. I tell you, Trev, this season's going to be a tough one for us. We'll have gone us a long fight against relegation into Division 2, and Jason is the one player we've got who's quality, so he's going nowhere, OK? Because in my world, a contract is a contract is a contract. Well, it is in my world, as it happens. No, no, Trev. No, no, because you live in agent world where contracts are just toilet paper with words on Now, look. And I have to say, Trev, it's this kind of situation that makes your profession so despised because you're dragging our sport into the gutter. Well, I don't think that's fair, John. John? We Sorry, Ted. Well, that was John. It doesn't matter. We... You're losing it, Trev. I am not losing it as it I happens. I used to think you were a pretty straight kind of guy. I but... am. We have had no contact with Chelsea. We did not start this rumour. Right. Well, perhaps you should have a word with Sammy before you embarrass yourself any more. Yep. Oh, bloody cheek. Trev, uh, can I have a moment? Um, what? Well, it's about this audition on Thursday as presenter of this new series on Channel 5. Yeah, um... Oh, you remember? I got the gig after I bumped into that producer at a charity golf day. Isn't showbiz marvellous? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's a religious series and... Religious? Um... Yes, why? Well, you know, it's just... you're not a religious person. No, but I could be. Of course you could. It's a very exciting project, Trev. It's going to mix reality genre and game show formats to look deep behind the mysteries of all the various religious faiths. Uh -huh. It's called Beyond Belief. 
Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, but the only fly in the ointment is, um, well, for this audition, they're expecting me to pay my own travel expenses. Right. I mean, it's not about the money, obviously. It's the principle, isn't it? Uh, and the precedent, of course. I mean, if I agree to this, you know, it could ripple through the entire industry. And before you know it, no one will be getting any exes at all. Exactly how much would these expenses be? Five pounds twenty p. Your tube fare, in other words. Yes. You know what, Ralph? On this occasion, on balance, I'd leave it. Yeah, you're probably right. I don't want them getting the wrong impression about me. No. Was that all? Well, there is one yeah. other thing. Yeah. And of course, Jung argued that dreaming is therapeutic. Therapeutic? He said dreams were the brain's way of processing emotional problems and that anyone who didn't dream would end up mentally disturbed. Well, I'm living proof that he's wrong, aren't I? Would anyone like a coffee? Yes, yes. please. Yes, that would be great. great. Okay, yes. everyone, just to let you know that Ralph needs to do some research for a religious show he's auditioning for, so he's going to spend some time with us. Sammy, can we go into my office, please? There's something we need to discuss. Lead on, Trevster. Try not to stop everyone working, Ralph, okay? Okay. So this audition is to front a program about religion? Oh, that's right. But you were a sports presenter. <laughs> no, no, Hydrant. It's you are a sports presenter. Present tense, you see. Not often you make a mistake in your English, but it's probably best if we pick you up on it when you do. <laughs> that's a funny smile. Right, now listen, you. We had a call... Here, Trev, listen to this. It's my new ringtone. <laughs> Brilliant, isn't it? What is it? It's a cow being hit by a truck. There's a whole catalogue of sound effects. I've, I found it really hard to choose. It was between this and a female orgasm. Do you want to hear a female orgasm? If only for old times' sake. No. Listen, Sammy, Ted Spicer rang. He... <laughs> Hello? It's your wife. All right. Hiya. Hiya. Um, I meant to ask, when you call round tonight, can you... Is that a woman? <laughs> yeah, she's having sex with a chicken. And a baboon. What? It's just Sammy mucking about with his ringtones. Right. Well, it's good to see you're all keeping so busy. Who's the daddy? Will you pack it in? I hear that one by accident. Just stop, OK? Sorry, you were saying? Could you pick up some bread on the way around tonight? A couple of loaves. It'd be really helpful. Couple of loaves. No problem. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Was that Meryl? Yeah. Asking you to do shopping? I'm happy to do it. Because you crave approval. You're an approval junkie, Trev. And that's no way to live your life. You want to be like me. I don't need the approval of other people. No. Well, that's probably just as well, isn't it? And by the way, you've got to stop trying to play the role of devoted hubby. You have to move on from Meryl, Trev. I tell you, the best thing you could do is just to flush her out of your system by spending a couple of nights with some really mucky women. Thank you for your concern. I know this club in Chingford. Yeah, I don't want to discuss clubs in Chingford. There's another one in Byfleet. Or Byfleet. I don't want to talk about my private life, full stop. I want to talk about Ted Spicer. Ted Spicer? Yeah, he rang about Jason. Did you read this thing about Chelsea being interested in it? Yeah. Good, isn't it? Is it? Good for his career. Is it? Oh, who are you? The is it bird? Jason's always seemed happy where he is. No, but that's before he knew Chelsea were interested. But that's not true, is it? Well, there must be something in it. You know what they say, Trev? There's no smoke without... An arsonist. I'm picking up a bit of a signal here. So, this religious series you're up for, mm -hmm. when's it scheduled to go out? Uh, end of October, in theory. You know, a trust is notwithstanding. And what does the programme involve, exactly? Well, it's got a variety of elements, but, uh, oh, my favourite is this section where a Catholic priest, a Buddhist monk and a Muslim cleric have to cooperate to renovate a farmhouse in the Algarve. And there's a viewer's poll to vote one-off week by week, and the one who survives till the end wins a cruise in the Caribbean. It's what they call a hybrid format. Is it? Yeah, yeah. And at my audition, apparently, I'm going to be interviewing the Muslim cleric. Have you ever interviewed any Muslims before? Uh, only Ronnie O'Sullivan. Uh, that was mostly about the snooker. But, um, I, I've been reading up on it all. You know, I've got one of those DIY Islam books. Skimmed through that, got the feel of Islam, but it's mostly hygiene. I mean, I'm oversimplifying slightly. No, not slightly. But what I need from you lot is practice at sharpening my interviewing technique so that I don't come out with anything inappropriate. You're all doing a funny smile now. Did you or did you not speak to any journalists? I have to speak to journalists, Trev. We need journalists. Journalists are the remora fish that swim alongside the great white shark of commerce and feed off the organisms on its skin. It's a mutually beneficial relationship. You've been reading the National Geographic again, haven't you? Look, all I'm saying Just is... Just answer my question, Sammy. All right. During a casual conversation with a journalist about Jason, I may possibly have made an innocent mention of Chelsea. An innocent mention of Chelsea. Purely as an abstract concept. Yeah. Allow me to explain. This had better be good. It's going to be good. Good. 
The morning after Jason got his hat trick, Reg Hartley from the Mirror rang me in a purely social context and we got chatting about Jason and how he looked like a prospect. And Reg said, wouldn't it be great for the lad if someone like Chelsea came in for him? And I said, yeah, it would be great if someone like Chelsea came in for him, but we must remember that the boy is under contract. Next thing I know, I've been anonymously misquoted. He's taken my words out of context. Basically, I've walked right into his trap. <laughs> You walked into his trap. Yeah, and I won't be as trusting next time, Trev, I can tell you that now. Although, by a happy accident, my naivety may have strengthened our hand in Jason's upcoming wage negotiations. Except that if Jason keeps underperforming because he's unsettled, then he'll get dropped, and before we know it, we'll be negotiating his wages with Accrington Bloody Stanley. Which is why we have to spell it out for Jason in words of one syllable that Chelsea do not want him. Okay, of course, yeah. Mind you, we don't know that for sure, do we? What? OK, so, uh, Teresa, let's just pretend that you're a guest, uh, talking about your beliefs on Beyond Belief. Will this take long? With me, I have Teresa. Now, Teresa, you're a Christian, aren't you? What does that involve? Uh, well, it involves an awful lot of things. I bet it does. Can you give us some examples? Well, it involves trying to lead as good a life as possible according to God's laws as laid down in the scriptures. And you feel it's important to obey these laws? Yes, I do. And why is that specifically? Well, because if you don't, then you go to hell where you scream in eternal agony as you're tortured in molten fire by sadistic flesh ravaging demons. Yes. Actually, that's probably a little bit over-specific. Wouldn't that be me. dealing I'm with not. this rumour if All you hadn't All I'm started. saying is that maybe I'm not the source of this rumour. Maybe it's come from Chelsea. From Chelsea? Yep. Chelsea don't need Jason. Why would Chelsea be after Jason? I don't know. Maybe Abramovich wants him as a pet for his kids. Who knows? No, no, no. This story arose from a rumour you started. Ah, yes. But what if I coincidentally started a rumour that happened to be true? Statistically, that is possible. There is no way Chelsea would be interested in Jason. Well, perhaps we should just ring him and check. No. No. I told Ted Spicer we're not involved with Chelsea and we're not getting involved. In any case, it'd be mad for someone as young as Jason to go to Chelsea. He'd never get a game. Yeah, nah. You're right. It'd be insane for him to go to Chelsea. Yeah. yeah he'd be better off at, say, uh, Villa or Tottenham, for example. Why Villa and Tottenham? They're just example. Abstract concepts? Yeah. You've spoken to them, haven't you? This is supposed to be my coffee break, Ralph. Uh, just a couple more questions. Hydran, um, to what extent would you say your spiritual beliefs are shaped by your lesbianism and vice versa? Right. Well, obviously my lesbianism means that I worship a supreme being who wears dungarees, has cropped hair and throws the discus for Bulgaria. Is that irony? Yes. Right. Just checking. Only the German accent always makes everything sound so factual. You cannot just go around right, Trent, offering all players for right. I concede that I may have spoken to clubs concerning Jason's future, Which but... means this rumour mill will keep turning, which will damage his relationship with his club and with his manager, and furthermore, it'll damage his manager's relationship with us. Who cares about his relationship with I us? I do. Relationships are important. You're always saying that. Where's the evidence? Relationships and trust, Sammy. I base my business philosophy on those two things. Do you know what Stalin called trust? The sickness of idiots. Whereas you base yours on Joseph Stalin. I'm not saying I agree with everything he said. Obviously the extermination thing was very short-sighted. All I'm saying Look, is... the bottom line is our credibility as an agency hangs on our reputation for fair dealing. A contract is a contract is a contract. Good for you, Trev. About time you put your foot down with Sammy. I'm amazed you put up with him all these years. Well, you know, he's a good friend in a crisis. Well, he's usually caused the crisis. Can you pass that loaf over? Thanks for getting the bread, by the way. Oh, no problem. What was it you wanted to see me about? Well, it's about us, really, and your attitude to us. My attitude to us? Yes. You see, when we separated, it was because I felt I needed more space. And I've given you space. You can't say you're short of space. No, and I'm, I'm making good use of the space as a person to develop, you know, and I really feel that I'm moving on, but... Well, I'm beginning to wonder whether we should formalise this break, because I feel I'm moving on, but I feel guilty because... I sense you're not moving on. No, no, I'm moving on as well. Really? Oh, definitely, moving on. Having already moved on quite a distance, you know, so, you know, it's probably best not to formalise anything because it might interfere with the momentum of the moving on. 
So you feel you are moving on? Good God, yes. What, emotionally? Emotionally, absolutely. Huge advances being made. I'm very pleased with how it's all going. Can you give me an example of how you're moving on emotionally? I'm doing evening classes. Oh, right. In what subject? I haven't decided yet, but emotionally I have committed to evening classes. So don't worry, you're moving on and I'm moving on alongside you. Not too close, but in parallel. Good, good. So you don't find yourself brooding about me or anything? Not at all. Life's too busy, honestly. In fact, whole weeks go by sometimes. I don't give you a moment's thought. Oh, I see. That's good to hear. You'd best be headed along now, Trev. I don't want to keep you from your busy life. Well, uh, no, when no, I say... Off you go, Trev. I've stopped worrying about you now. And the time is 11 minutes to 8. You're listening to Today. I'm talking to the sports agent Trevor Heslop, who is useless. Well, with respect, John, I feel useless is a little... I put it to you, Mr. Heslop, that you're a coward who can't stand up to his business partner and who desperately appeases his ex-wife because he's terrified of losing her, so which is it? Are you a man or a mouse? Uh, you no, know, no, you can't rattle me, John, because I know this is a dream. Man or mouse, Squeaker? It's a dream. Let's put it to our studio audience, shall we? What? Today doesn't have a studio audience. We've done down. No, 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 no. I'm not falling for any of this. This is all a dream, and I'm just going to make myself wake up. And that was when you woke up? No, I woke up when John Humphreys turned into a giant cat. What have I got this morning? Uh, Jason at 9.30. Morning, Trev Meister. How are you? Morning, Hydron. And, um... Ralph seems to be here again. He was worried about not being sufficiently youth-orientated, so he's experimenting on Barry, only I think the experiment is inhumane. I'd pay money to see this. As a young person, Barry, what is your attitude to religion? Do you feel it's minging, or do you think respect? What? I'm keeping it accessible. Are you right, Sammy? You're making me a bit nervous standing behind me like that. I know. Um, uh, Barry, religion-wise, how would you define yourself? I'm an agnostic. Like me? No, Sammy. Agnostic is a don't know. You don't believe in the existence of God. Atheist is the word for that. I don't believe in pixies. Is there a word for that as well? Actually, Sammy, do you mind? Look, Trev, can you tell Sammy to stop? Yeah, come on, Sammy. Jason's on his way up. Thank you. Sorry about that, Barry. OK, um... Barry, you say you're an agnostic. Where does the war on terror fit into that? What's the war on terror got to do with it? Um, uh, well, I'm not sure. You're, you're sort of expected to work it in somewhere. It was convention. So, we got you in, Jason, to clarify certain things, but actually, could you stop playing with your mobile for a sec? Oh, sorry, Trev. Right. I just no. took a photo of you, see? Very nice. Look, um, Here's one of the inside of my nostril. Listen, Jason, this is important. That's right. You see, this story about Chelsea... Oh, what, the one about me quitting the club and going to Chelsea for six million? Yeah, Of which the um, club would give me two million. Sammy, if he quits his club, why would they give him two million? Loyalty bonus. Oh, f Look, Jason, none of this is true, OK? Chelsea are not interested in you, OK? Oh, OK, Twiff. So the best thing you can do is just... Concentrate on your game and do your best for your club, isn't that right, Sammy? Absolutely. I mean, you've always been happy at the club, haven't you? Yeah, nice. No, it's, it's, it's a good club. Exactly. So, you know, just focus on performing for your team and for your manager. And don't get distracted if your name gets linked with other clubs. That's right. Like Villa or Tottenham. What, Villa and Tottenham interested me? No, 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 no. Neither Villa nor Tottenham have made an offer for you. As yet. Nor will they while Jason is happy where he is. Absolutely. If Jason's happy, then you are happy, aren't you, Jason? <sighs> well, I've... I'm all right, sure now. You see what you've done? Listen, Trev, relax. There's no question of Jason moving if he is happy where he is. Right. Although, knowing you might be happier somewhere else can undermine the happiness you feel in the place you're at. Have you noticed that? Funny, isn't it? Just human nature, I suppose. And once you've got a glimpse of the new happy place, then... Uh, well, Sammy, you... What? There's a muscle twitching in Trev's jaw. Well, personally, I don't let the war on terror bother me because I feel... Why are you nodding like that? to show how much I'm listening. Oh, right. Well, it's about acceptance, basically. Mm -hmm. My attitude is, if some terrorist attack happens, then I think, well, that's because God meant it to happen. What a coincidence. That's what the terrorists think as well. I do... So, Jason, just remember, you knuckle down now, and in a couple of years' time, maybe you will be playing for Chelsea. Yeah, OK, Trev. Uh, I suppose I should cancel the order for the Porsche. Yeah? And the Aston Martin, yeah. See ya. See ya. Live the dream. Well, <laughs> you should be heading off, shouldn't you? Don't want to be late for your tryout. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Nervous? <sighs> Very. This is my first gig since the BBC made me freelance. Do you think I'm in with a chance? Of course. 
I just, just worry. Don't look like a fool. That's something you should never worry about, Ralph. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Excuse me. Yes, yes. What yes, the hell is yes. that? Haven't you had one of those before? Being a lesbian is obviously duller than I thought. Hello. Oh, hello, Virgin Press Office. Did you get my letter? I'll be all right, won't well, I? No, of course you will. No, I think you'll find it strongly worded rather than a death threat, per se. OK. No. Well, um, uh, no, thanks, no, no, no. thanks for your help, everyone. Have a good one. I'm off. Bye, Ralph. Good Bye. luck. Bye. He doesn't stand on earthly, does he? Nope. I just told him what he wanted to hear. I must stop doing that. I did it with Meryl last night. I told her what I thought she wanted to hear, only it turned out it wasn't what she wanted to hear, I think. Oh, I don't know. I get so confused with her. Listen, Trev. I know it's none of my business, but do you think perhaps it's time you moved on? There's something twitching in your jaw. Trev, I have Ted Spicer for you. OK, I'll take it over here. Ted! Trev! Good news. I've laid down the law to Jason and Sammy, and I think you'll find you now have a happy and focused player. That's great. Uh, actually, I was ringing you about something else. Go on. Well, I was wondering if you'd represent me, you see. Only I've been approached by a top premiership club, you know. They're secretly planning to help with the manager, and they'd like me to step in straight away. Well, next week. Right. But you're under contract, aren't you, Ted? <laughs> well, in theory, yeah. But, you know, if the club tried to hold me to it, I'll just kick up such a stink that it makes no sense for them to keep me. Right. At least this way they'll get some compensation for me. Maybe half a million, though I'll want some of that. There's a loyalty bonus, of course. I'm doing them a favour when you think about it. Is that right? What about the long fight against relegation? Oh, let's face it. We're down already. It's August. Yeah, but we're crap. Anyone can see that. So, Trev, are you going to handle the deal for me? No, Ted. I'm going to put the phone down on you. What? Sammy? Yep, what is it, Trevman? Ring round the clubs, touting Jason to them. Oh, sure. Which clubs? All of them. A pragmatic and realistic decision, if I may say so, Trev. Yeah. That's what's so depressing about it. Uh, Trev? Yep? I've got Radio 4 on the line. They want to know if you'd go on the Today programme to be interviewed about ethics in sport by John Humphreys. Oh. Uh, right. Um... I'll say you've got flu, shall I? Yes, please. Right. Oh, and if they should ask if Sammy can do it instead of me, then... Uh... I'll say he's got flu as well. You're a star. Trevor's World of Sport was written by Andy Hamilton and starred Neil Pearson as Trevor and Paul Reynolds as Sammy. With Abdul Salis, Cosima Shaw, Rosalind Dares, Claire Skinner, Trevor Cooper, Jake Wood, Michael Fenton-Stevens and John Humphreys as himself.